Now, what the sequential switch is, it's also a sequential switch. A surprise, right? You can have any signal at the input, being uh, audio or CV, you can attenuate it. What's come here is attenuated or not. I'm going to show you. I take the signal here, so you see it. I go to the first input. I take the output, I go to the CV, I have an oscillator, CV in. Okay. So if I'm on sequencer, normal sequencer mode, I go there. But now, any signal here at the input will go out here, and I can attenuate it. So if I full, it's just a signal, if you take the signal directly to the CV in, you hear this, but you can attenuate it. And so, mute it, okay? You can switch between what's going in and a normal CV. You know what I mean? So it could be a cool option. So, then what's going here at the input is going at the output as said. So if you take another step, you can have a CV going out here or what's at the input if you want. You take another signal. So now if I switch back to first step, Okay, you can just sequence the signal, incoming signal now. Of course you could have uh, this one on this step instead and same signal here. You know what I mean? I'm gonna run it right up, up. Let's take something completely different on this step. Oh, yeah, you know what? Let's take something like this. Okay, you understand the principle. Huh? Now you can even have a different signal here and mix it. Oh yeah, my recommendation, by the way, is you could go, depending what you want to do, you just take an attenuated signal here. So if I take an... Um, how could I show you this? It's not as a camera field, but I take an LFO here. I send it to the mixing. It sounds like this. Instead of doing this directly, I go. I take my LFO, I go to an attenuator, and they at, then I take the attenuated signal and go in the input. So now I can really just increasing, I just can dose it, you know. Voila. I'll go back to simple now, so it's less weird. Okay. I'll go back to sequencer mode, okay? Normal sequencer mode, like this. Yeah, I don't need to take them out. You understand now I'm on sequencer mode with CV coming from here. Okay. Okay. You have also a reset input with an on-off button. It means you can reset the sequencer via any s gate at the input. Here, if I, send, if I go a bit... If now I send a, a gate here, gate signal coming from somewhere. If I take signal from here, for instance, it's too fast, but let's make it slow. Oops. So, uh, I can say, now I want the signal to be active. Okay, not, it's not in sync, I don't take an indivision, but you see, and then you can also switch this off, so you can just... But the meaning of this is that you can just loop your sequence wherever you want. Now it's eight step, you can make it five step. If you just take the gate out, a step out, and go to reset. When you activate it, it will loop. You know what I mean? 
until seven, uh, six and seven. Eh? Oops. Okay. What you also have now is a direction switch. Direction switch has also a direction CV input. Means you can change the direction via CV, I'm going to explain, or via switch. So of course now we are on this, it goes back and it starts here now. Now it's first point and last point, okay? If I, go, if I loop it, okay? You remember you can you can have a signal here if you want. Now the direction still takes the output, go to a uh, to an uh, GUST used as VC also as an oscillator, so you can hear what it does. Huh? Okay. Um, direction. <clears throat> so I clock the sequencer, the sequential switch. Okay. I'll clock it. Then, as we know, we can go backward, forward, and we have also um, an input to define via CV what we want, which direction we want to go. If I take a gate signal, go in the direction input. You see, it won't, oh, I'm too fast. Sorry, it won't do anything. I have to be on going backward, so I can define now every gate. It will go either backward or forward, depending if the gate is open or closed. So you see when it's closed it goes backward, when it's open it goes forwards. Okay. I hope it's clear. Let's make it slower. You see, huh? Okay. Now if you want you can control it via a bipolar signal. You go on forward mode and then you take a bipolar signal. You can look what happens. When it's it's on positive a positive signal we will make it go backward and negative signal which just go back to forward so it makes it go forward. Okay? This is the way the direction works. Then you have an inhibit input. So that you see now I'm taking, when I go down here, low here, it means I send 5 volt, like if it's a gate on, okay? If I take a gate on, let, let's let you see in the reset for instance. I'm on here. Okay, I'm resetting it. For the inhibit now, if I have a high signal here, gate on, it's just muting the step we were on, but it runs in the background. The sequence still runs. So if you want the sequencer to jump to a different step, though having a pause in between, this is the way you do it. Of course, it makes more sense. Yeah, well, actually, there is no, there are no rules. But I'd say with a, with clock division, it's kind of cool to use it. See so now it's faster than the sequence. So when you're on a step, you just pow make pause, but also. It's still on the same step. Look. You see? 
then it goes to the, if now I, I did slow the clock very much way. So this is the speed of the clock going in. If I inhibit like this, this is what it will do. So of course you can repeat steps also doing this, if you know what I mean. So this is an example, like I have a main clock and this main clock, the same signal, I divide it by two and send it here in the inhibit input so it will jump every two steps of course. If I take a division by three here at the input from the main clock, just make one, two, <laughs> then jump. Okay, if I take divided by, divided by four here at the input from the main clock, divided by five. To make some variations, any bit is, is a cool way to do it. Thank you. 